Hi all, Aid from RevMonkey here. In today's video, I'll be talking about my one year ownership experience with this fabulous, fabulous Lotus Amira. I'll also be going into detail of its first service, which I had a few days ago. Good and bad surprise. I'll be talking more about how the car has felt to me in that one year, the good and the bad, and my general feelings about the car. So without further ado, let's crack on. Sponsor of today's video is Adrian Flux. Now they don't just happen to share my first name. Adrian Flux offer a tailor-made insurance service for cars and bikes as well as other insurances. What I like about Adrian Flux is that they look at my particular situation, whether it's modifications, high performance cars, or cars of an older period. They'll then find a plan that fits that particular situation. What makes Adrian Flux different? Now, when you usually seek out quotes for car insurance or bike insurance, you go online and you fill out a lengthy form with all your details and leave it up to an algorithm to calculate what your premium will be. Well, Adrian Flux much, much prefer you to call them, thereby giving them the ability to really tell you the quote for your exact circumstances. Now find out more by going to adrianflux.co.uk. You can click on the link below. Okay, so obviously, seeing as I've got a good relationship with them and I've used it from the start and they're the oldest, oldest dealership in the world to boot, I had my first service at Bell and Colville. Their service centre being not at the same place as the East Horsley showroom. So looking at it, bring it down one by one. So it's a Thai pay service, as you'd expect, priced at 275. Now, when I originally got the PDF email about this, I thought, oh, wow, that's really good. 275 quid for a service. <laughs> I thought, happy days, happy days. But then it got a little bit worse. I actually thought I was going to pay 275. Anyway, so it's an oil filter change and some gaskets. I mean, gaskets, when people say a gasket's blown, it sounds like an awful thing. It's actually just a thin little bit of sealant kind of metal or rubber uh, which stops things leaking but hugely important um carry out visual health check free of charge download latest oem software 21 pound um with a d discount now interesting i don't know why there'd be a charge on downloading the software i mean the software updates you'd think would be free of course because they're basically updating the car and some of those will be fixes for software related errors um, and then another one, so there's two lots of it, which is probably why they had the car a day and a half. Collect and deliver was free, which is good, actually. That saved me a lot of hassle. Uh, even the fuel was free. Well, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> so Lotus have used Mobile One. There was 6.1 litres used, so it's a full oil change at £72. Then there's some Lotus specialist charge there, £16.66. Not sure what that is about, never mind. On the next page here, we've got that the front bake pads have got 70% life remaining and the rear 80%. Now that's really encouraging. I've put over 5,000 miles on it, as you can see here, 5259, and I've got 80% of the rear pads. And I've, I use the car in anger on the road. I don't often poodle about in this. That's 5,000 hard miles. And that includes two track days, actually. Well, moving on to the tyres as well, tyre report, near side front and off side front, 6.66 millimetres, and the rear tyres at 5.55. So that means, in 5,500 miles, these Goodyear Eagle F1 tyres, I've hardly worn at all. But that's interesting. Anyway, total bill was 469 plus that, a total of £539. Now I think that, well, it's a lot more than I thought it was going to be at there, so I was... It was a bit of a shock that it jumped that much. But overall, for a sports car, using this sort of way, that seems reasonable. It's certainly nothing to scare anybody. You could have a BMW 320 coming out in that 300 and something. So all in all, I'm very pleased with that service and the service support of well, how well the car's done and how little it's worn the uh, auxiliary items. <laughs> So, 5,400 miles now since I acquired this car back in the middle of February 2023. So, one year's full ownership. 
by now you may have seen the service report or oh, it's coming after this I'm not sure how I'm going to edit it to be honest but I can say categorically this car is fabulous and it still is getting better month by month it just grows into you it's part of your skin it's terrifically exhilarating even without that straight line speed although it's been somewhat improved with the Larini exhaust system added and the, yeah, the extra noise makes it sound faster, so it makes it feel faster, of course, it's all part of an experience. It's just got better and better. I, I'm just basically in love with the car. I'm now um, thinking that I'm never gonna sell it. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll keep the windows up, it might get too loud in here. It is uh, very loud, get lots of looks, a bit antisocial, but there you go. Fabulous looking car. I mean, on top of the fabulous looks, and people are loving this stealth satin PPF thing I've got over it. And I did see a, a normal red car at a dealer's, and I realised actually my one does look that much more special. So I've just got happier and happier with that initial decision. I said the sound is incredible, and it's got better. The Rini exhaust now, with over a thousand miles on it, has warmed up incredibly. It's even more bassy, it's even got more character, it's got richness. It's just FFS's supercarder. As I've said in another video, it seems to have leapt from a V6 to a V12. Now some people go, oh, that's impossible with V12. I can't compare it to a V12. Well, they get six and 12 are similar, like five and 10, like with the RS3 and the R8. Uh, bit of a wet one there. Yep, I'm doing sound effects again. Obviously the car was fabulous around the track and in this year of ownership I've managed to go on the track twice. I plan to do at least two in this coming year. Now although an Aero Latin is on my list of cars to get, until I get that I'm more than happy to take this on a track. Honestly it's a giant killer. It's the speed it takes into a bend, through the bend and out of the bend. It makes up for what it might lack in absolute power and torque when on the straight. Now I've been in many cars, with this sport suspension on this car, I realise actually it's not too bad at all. Um, it's not as severe as the suspension that, on low speeds as my Integrale, for example, and not as wincing as when you crack over something in the Ferrari F430. <laughs> so quite frankly, I think, you know, which was the only weak point of the sport suspension, I can live with it. Now the benefits of it are just improved feel, feedback, and just pure dynamics when going around slow, medium and fast speed corners. Now I have got used to all the electrics on this car, the electricery, because I do essentially at heart prefer the nostalgic feel of the basic system setup on the Integrale, for example, with its amount of dials, which just clearly show you at a glance what's going on. You don't have to delve into any electronics to work out what's happening. However, I do concede, um, it's much easier to see the speed and the gears indicator on the dashboard. At a glance, in track mode, which I'm always on, I can always see the tyre pressures, which is a bit of a comfort. Uh, if you're a motorcyclist like me and a sports car driver, you know tyre pressures are actually pretty critical and also it can warn you of any impending doom. The stereo has, has got better and better over this year, um, quite substantially so. Uh, initially people were, and including myself, were a little bit in shock at how the system, the KEF system, was not as good as we'd hoped for. We'd hoped it'd be at least as good, if not better, than other cars we might have been in listening to the stereo. But it has got better. The general sound dynamics across the range from low to high have got better and the woofer has definitely got a lot better. See, there's no distortion, you just feel a comfortable beat. I'm still not saying it's brilliant, but it's, it's good enough. The interaction with Android and CarPlay uh, is perfect. I still don't like the fact that as soon as I start the car up and open the doors, the stereo comes on. It doesn't give me the choice whether I want it on or not. I mean, it's not that hard to turn it off, but it's just a little niggle. Well, 
I knew this car, by virtue of being a Lotus, would have magic. The nearest thing I can get to it is the Italian magic that I've talked about in some of my Italian car videos, like Integrale and the Ferrari F430, where the Italians seem to have this special magic trick. Um, Germans have it only when they go to the highest echelon. Americans have never had it. And uh, the British have it when it's down to the individual low volume car makers who have got that capacity to focus on what makes a car really special. I'd say anybody contemplating getting this car, don't be put off by initial test drive. You've, and in test drive, you've got no way of knowing just how good this car is. It might feel slowish in a straight line compared to what you might have. You might wonder what the fuss about the steering is. You might feel the gearbox is kind of notchy. It, I don't believe that at all. I think it's just direct and it's very, very confidence inspiring because you know exactly what gear you're in, as opposed to my 94 Carrera GT which is like putting your hand in a puddle of water. You can't get those on initial driving experience. It's like Integrale. People are getting that and think, it, well, it makes a bit of a noise, it crashes over bumps, it's got no straight line speed, nothing happens for two seconds when you put foot down. But once you get to know it and love it and realise just how good it is at those last three temps, you suddenly realise what it's all about. This car's exactly the same and it's really phenomenal and I still cannot believe a car that goes as well as this, sounds as well as this and costs as little as this is this good. At a third the price of a Ferrari, you'd struggle to lose this car on a short twisty track and it's prettier as well in my opinion, still prettier the, than any Ferrari in the noughties um, although the 458 comes close. As I said before, if this was Ferrari's car, the Ferrari badge, and it looked exactly like this, had a V6 map, and it was even the same power, and they called it the Dino. They'd have all the books that would break all records, especially if it came in below 200,000. Well, you can hear all that, that character of the, of the supercharger as you'd come off the revs, the deep kind of bass effect, like a backward blast effect of bass when you take the foot of the accelerator as well. So now after a year of ownership, I'm struggling to think of any negatives. It's just, it's just an amazing, amazing car. I can't believe it, I feel privileged and very fortunate to be driving around in it. And the attention it gets is mad. I've only seen one Amira in the last two months and I'm traveled on road every day. Either they've, either they've stopped production or people aren't buying them because they've got no money anymore. I don't know what it is, but uh, it feels special driving this car around. Well, I'll leave you saying it. I've had a fabulous year of ownership. I now do not want to sell it. I might never sell it. It's a car I've had from brand new, which is rare for me. It's my car. I'll still keep it on Auto Trader up for sale because actually my a link to my videos on it, and I get loads of views, people looking at the advert. But uh, no intention of selling it anymore. I just can't think what on earth could possibly replace it or match it in any way. After one year, my... Um, Niggles or negatives on the car remain very small and nitpicky. I mean, really, it's worth mentioning. It's little things like the car gets ferociously dirty down the side on the black bit at the bottom and on the side of the doors and at the back due to the aerodynamics. It just means that driving anything but a nice dry road conditions makes the car filthy. Now, I might take a trick from my Integrale and put FUD mud flaps on the car. I'm not sure it's going to work aesthetically. I'll have to try it and see how it goes. But my God, what a difference front mud flaps make. Now, back when I was a kid, many cars had them. It was just do rigueur. You kind of lose an expectation. It just kept the cars clean. So it disappeared for the last few decades, but I'm going to bring it back because they make such a difference on the lack of stone chipping and dirt on Integrale. I think it's money well spent. Of course, mud flaps suit that car. It's a rally car. So, interested to see how it works on this one. Right, okay, well, thank you for watching. Now, if you like this sort of content on the Amira and the other cars I've got in my collection, the other cars I'll be driving, as I've got some amazing stuff coming up, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit a like, hit the bell. It all helps with the algorithm, helps grow my channel. I'm starting to take it more seriously now, and I could do with your help. Thank you very much, take care out there.